Welcome to Jimbo's Garage. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to Jimbo's Garage. Well, today's project at hand is to make a bracket or a... <laughs> well, today's project is to make a bracket or a stand for a Pentair BioShield UV pool water sanitizer. Wow, that was a mouthful to say. Basically, it is a six inch in diameter by about four foot tall tube, and it's used to sanitize pool water, obviously. Now, the manufacturer of this product includes these plastic brackets. They mount to the top and bottom of this cylinder, and mainly for up against a block wall or vertical surface, or maybe some fencing. But in this situation, we have nothing like that. The pool equipment is all by itself out in the middle of a concrete pad. So the plan is to make a bracket or stand that is going to be strong enough to support this at the four foot high vertical point and yet be mounted to the concrete surface. Now they told me that I could design this any way I want and use basically any material I want. The only thing is they want it somewhat water resistant. So my choice is to use aluminum. I've got some quarter inch aluminum plate here and some quarter inch by six inch aluminum C channel. And I thought this would be another great opportunity to work with some aluminum. So I haven't done that for a while. We're going to be a lot of drilling, cutting, and of course, some aluminum MIG welding. Let's get started on today's project. All right, so I've got a little sketch right here. You know, the client had asked me, uh, they pretty much said that I could design anything I want, uh, whatever I thought uh, would work. And, uh, you know, that could get a little dangerous when you uh, ask me to design some because I have a tendency to overbuild everything. That's just the way it is. Now there's all kinds of different ways of doing it, but this is what I came up with. Basically it is a 12 by 12 plate and it's a two inch by six inch C channel. And I've got uh, four holes on the plate, about an inch and a quarter in from the corners. And I got a couple of holes in the C channel top and bottom for the uh, mounting brackets for the cylinder. And then I've got a, like a back support on the very back to uh, hopefully make everything rigid. This thing is about 36 inches uh, tall, and so it's going to need a little bit of support there. All right, so this is uh, uh, some aluminum plate, some quarter inch thick aluminum plate that I had left over from a project I did a while back. And uh, I'm just uh, cutting out enough for the 12 by 12 plate and the uh, back support. All right, for this particular project right here, uh, I'm going to be using the Evolution uh, 7 and a quarter inch circular saw. And uh, I've got this blade right here. I noticed that Evolution's got several different blades that, uh, that they offer up. Uh, this one right here uh, says it's for cutting uh, aluminum, aluminium, alumino, made in Japan. Oh. Anyways, this blade is for cutting aluminum. So let's get this thing put on, give it a try. So I wanted to give this aluminum blade a try. Uh, you know, especially for aluminum. Now, I did the whole project before with the Steel Thunder from Mercer. And to be honest with you, I can't really tell the difference between the aluminum blade and the Steel Thunder. Granted, aluminum is soft. Uh, so, I don't really, I couldn't really tell any difference. You know, I had a, I had a, a viewer before had mentioned that I had, you know, I, when I said I, the downfall with these circular saws is they put chips all over the place. Uh, and then he suggested I hook up a vacuum to the circular saw. Well, this particular saw does not have a vacuum port, uh, but therefore we have all these problems, the chip all over the chips all over the place. But uh, if that's all it is, that's not really a big deal. The saw works well and cuts everything nice. All right, so this is the uh, square plate, and you can see I'm just putting a coat of beeswax on the uh, flap disc right here, and that works really good. Uh, you know, it keeps from loading up the flap disc and it keeps the blade nice and sharp. And it really grinds down. Uh, the surface is nice and smooth. You know, one thing I, I'm, I'm doing on, on the last project I did, aluminum project, I used a file to clean up the edges. I know when you're TIG welding aluminum, uh, you know, they don't want any contaminants in there. And the cleaner it is, the better it is. Uh, and I did that with a file in the last project, although the last project was aluminum MIG. Uh, I wanted to try the flap disc here and see if it really did uh, make a difference. So here I am just laying out the, uh, the holes. I'm just using a straight edge right here, or a straight rule I should say, and an inch and a quarter in from each side, and just making some hash points. 
and the same thing with the C-channel um, about four inches up on both the top and the bottom and then this bracket right here they provide has got some oblong holes in it so uh, they've got a little bit of adjustment so if these holes aren't right on the money uh, we're able to adjust it a little bit all right so I did say earlier that this thing was like uh, 32 inches long or 36 inches long it's actually 48 inches long it's actually four foot long and I just put a couple of center punch holes on on all the areas that I need to and then over to the drill press and I grab a brand new drill from champion cutting tools and these drills are razor blade sharp no pilot hole necessary uh, this is a 3 8 diameter and uh, it is aluminum and it cuts through there no problem you know my drill press is a little bit higher than a normal drill press would be so sometimes things get a little awkward just like this right here uh, you know trying to get everything hold it nice and flat while I'm drilling it so I had to uh, get it up on my shoulder and sometimes you just got to do what you got to do to make things happen and this uh, this worked out all right for me all right a little bit of countersink all the way around on both sides to clean up the edges and deburr everything and then it's time for assembly all right so we're going to put the C channel right in the middle of the 12 by 12 plate and I'm going to be holding it in place with a fab block square this is an 18 inch tall square and I'm going to be using some armor clamps right here kind of clamp everything down to keep everything nice and square and plumb and that's exactly what it is and we're going to be operating off the HGP Pro Pulse 300 I've got it set in the aluminum mode and I'm going to be cranking it up to about 450 inches a minute thereabouts and then uh, adding a couple volts to it you know I used these settings on the last project and it, after after multiple welding it, it took me that much time to find uh, uh, the sweet spot if you will uh, for the settings and once you found that man everything uh, welds fairly nice and that's where I'm at right here in this one right here 200 or 450 inches a minute and a couple of volts on the plus side uh, makes a makes a really smooth smooth weld so for the C channel I'm going to be welding it all the way around you know surprisingly everything stayed nice and plumb you'd think I'd get some deflection or some drop back but uh, it, it everything everything stayed nice and plumb and square and that's kind of what that looks like uh, not too bad for aluminum MIG pretty pretty clean not a lot of uh, uh, debris or any spatter and then I'm just tacking this uh, support brace in the very back you know aluminum MIG is, is it, at least where I'm from it's not is not a very common process uh, you know especially for a, a hobbyist like myself you know, if people that have uh, boats or do a lot of boat repair or something like that, uh, maybe aluminum push-pull gun or a spool gun of some type, uh, they probably use that. But for, for, for this right here, the aluminum MIG, this is only an 8-foot gun lead. So for projects that you had that just like this one right here that you're able to just keep on your welding table, um, it's perfect for you know, anytime that you can weld in the flat or horizontal position is always good, in my opinion. <laughs> Uh, it's much better than vertical up or vertical down and uh, you know the the welds just lay in there really nice and that's what I'm doing right here uh, for this back piece right here they're about two to three inches long they're about six to eight inches apart from each other and then it's all I really need to to put this together you know this really wasn't too too much of a project right here but it was a project and sometimes the smallest projects are the funnest projects and especially uh, when you get a chance to uh, you know do something you don't do a lot of which I don't do a lot of this uh, aluminum welding especially aluminum MIG it was a lot of fun according to the client this thing worked out pretty good it's at least that's what they wanted to uh, accomplish they, they mounted the cylinder to it and it uh, it's it was nice and rigid and sturdy and so everything is all good I hope you guys enjoyed watching this short little video simple little video Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next week. See you next time on Jimbo's Garage.